Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant, hands-on software architect, and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In these next four lessons, we'll be taking a look at various integration styles. In this particular lesson, Lesson 19, we'll take a look at the file transfer integration style. Now, in the great book, Enterprise Integration Patterns by Gregor Hope and Bobby Wolf, they identify four basic styles of integration. The first is file transfer. The second is shared database. The third is remote procedure invocation, which includes things like web services, RMI, .NET remoting, etc. And then finally, messaging. In this lesson, we'll focus on the file transfer integration style and take a look at some of the pros and cons when it's wise to use it and when it's not. When we take a look at file transfer, what we have are two applications, application A and B, and they're both sharing data. In other words, application A sends data to some sort of shared file location where application B then picks, his, picks that up. And when we take a look at these from the protocol standpoint, of course, the most basic protocol and probably the most common, of course, for file transfer is FTP or SFTP, the file transfer protocol. However, we do have other kinds of protocols that fit within the file transfer. For example, HDFS fits in within file transfer. So does SCP, Secure Copy Protocol. We also have the old SMB, Server Message Block, and finally Common Internet File System, CIFS. All of these are protocols which fit nicely within the file transfer integration style. And this is a way of being able to integrate between two applications or two services. If we take a look at file transfer, it's very popular because of all these advantages. It is, in fact, near universal. In other words, almost every platform, as a matter of fact, I would go as far as to say every platform can read and write files to a file system. As a matter of fact, it's very simple to integrate this. Um, and what's so cool is that this has the highest level of system abstraction out of any of the integration styles, even including messaging. And here's why. Application B is written in a particular language and platform. It has no idea where application A is, what language it's in, what platform is in, where it resides, its name. In other words, we have full levels of abstraction. As a matter of fact, let me tell you how abstracted this is. Application B may be some sort of .NET uh, C-sharp system that's reading in a file or, or some shared data in, in terms of FTP. Application A may in fact be a human user that's typing into a file and hitting save on the file system. That's the level of abstraction that we have. So this looks pretty simple, doesn't it? Well, not so much because there's a lot of negatives as well. There's always trade-offs with this near universal, simple integration and very high level of system abstraction. And those trade-offs are, first of all, the fact that error processing can get really difficult. Let's say I've got a batch of 50 records. I'm reading in, I'm polling a file, and I read record one, two, three. I get up to about record 30 and I get an error. Record 31, error. Record 32, error. Record 33, error. Uh, in other words, how, how much longer should I keep going? Should I keep going to the end of the file if it does exist? And besides, this is a one-way data-only communication. What do I do with those errored records? And so this becomes very, very uh, uh, difficult, I should say, to do error processing within file transfer. Furthermore, usually those kind of errors occur like I just described because I can read files much faster than you can write files. And if I'm doing some sort of polling for the presence of a file and I see that file there, I'm going to start to read it. And the problem is what we have to do are these algorithms where if I detect the presence of a file that I'm polling, I need to take a, a snapshot, I need to get the timestamp of that file, wait 30 seconds, check it again to see if that timestamp changed. If it did, wait another 30 seconds, check it again. Now it hasn't changed, now it's okay to process it because usually those errors occur when we reach the end of file marker. You know, the other problem with file transfer, and maybe this is okay, 
But application A and application B will always and forever be out of sync from a data perspective. Now, like I said, we may have orders that are being placed in application B and appli or application A, and application B may be our warehouse, and we're transferring those orders to the warehouse for shipping. Of course, they're always going to be out of sync. And as a matter of fact, those are the times when file transfer works well, when we don't need immediate data. In other words, we batch things up, we process it at night, it's relatively cheap, but just be aware of the error processing aspect of it. This kind of adds a level of complexity to the file transfer protocol. Now, in next lesson, lesson 20, we'll be taking a look at the shared database integration style and see kind of the, the protocols or tools used for there, as well as the positives and negatives associated with the data um, sharing file uh, data sharing integration styles. So this has been Software Architecture Monday, Lesson 19, Integration Styles File Transfer. My name is Mark Richards. Stay tuned next week for Lesson 20, which we'll be taking a look at the shared database integration style. Thank you so much.